everyone finally here's the video that's been requested a few times in my channel so today in this video I'm going to show you not one but two um, icings or frostings that I make for my cakes um, I've been uh, requested to make a video of how I make my cream cheese frosting and I'm going to show you that on this video um, but I'm also going to show you how I make my Swiss meringue buttercream and let's get started so first off, we're going to start with uh, 12 egg whites and uh, I added a cup and a half of white sugar and just mix it up a little bit with a wire whisk attachment. And I use a double boiler so I have a pot there with a little bit of water boiling and I put my mixing bowl with the egg whites and the sugar mixture on top. Make sure that the bowl doesn't touch the water. I also use a temp uh, candy thermometer to uh, get the temperature and as soon as it reaches 120 degrees Fahrenheit then it's good to go to be whipped. Um, I go and whip it to the highest speed probably for about 10 to 15 minutes or until the bowl is not too warm to touch anymore and I stop whipping it once I get quite a stiff, uh, stiff peak just like so. And I just mix it a little bit more um, just to make sure that it is properly whipped up. And I put it on a low speed. Uh, the video is a bit uh, forward or sped up. So that's not the actual speed. It's actually a bit slower. And I use butter that is room temperature just like that. And I use about three cups of butter. And the speed should be as low as that a um, couple of seconds ago and then I whip it up to um, high speed again and don't forget to scrape the bowl down and your wireless attachment as well and just whip it up at high speed for another couple of minutes. And once it's done whipping, I like replacing my wire whisk attachment with a paddle attachment for about 10 to 15 minutes. I did not um, do that for this video, but um, that actually helps the Swiss Brown Butter Cream become smoother and nicer to pipe and should get something like this. And that's my Swiss Brown Butter Cream. Now let's go to the cream cheese frosting. So I have here a block of cream cheese, Philadelphia cream cheese, and I like to cut it up um, in pieces. And uh, this is room temperature cream cheese. I put it in, in a different mixer and I just whip it with or mix it using a paddle attachment at the lowest speed possible. And I try to mix it like this for about 30 seconds at a time, scraping the bowl and the paddle attachment every 30 seconds. You don't want to overmix your cream cheese because it will become curdled and it's not good. Uh, when I first started doing cream cheese, I used to do the traditional recipe which is cream cheese, butter, powdered sugar, and then some vanilla extract. but. I found that a little too sweet. I don't really like using powdered sugar, so I sort of experimented with this recipe, which is I'm showing you right now. So that should be the last time that I'm mixing it with a paddle attachment. And here's my secret. I just combined my Swiss meringue buttercream with that mixed cream cheese. I added four, about four cups to start. You know, it really depends on how strong the cream cheese taste you want it. I, en I ended up adding one more cup to that. And then I just folded the Swiss meringue batter cream with the cream cheese and just uh, made sure that everything is incorporated well. Now you can stop at this point, but I like to mix it up just a little bit more in the, mi in the sand mixer with a paddle attachment just so it gets mixed properly and again at the lowest speed possible and I just mix it for no more than 30 seconds. Uh, I think I mixed 
it this time a little bit too long because I was also doing something else but I would prefer to just mix it for about 20 to 30 seconds um, I think 30 seconds is actually a bit long already but thankfully it still ended up being quite an okay cream cheese frosting and that's how I make my cream cheese frosting I just mix my Swiss meringue buttercream with my actual cream cheese so it should be smooth that looks a little bit uh, grainy but it's actually not and so I use that to um, as a filling for one for my red velvet cake two weeks ago if I'm not mistaken um, and as you can see it's so easy to pipe it holds its shape and uh, it's still very smooth and it tastes very good it's not too sweet and you can really taste the cream cheese and that's it thank you so much for watching I hope you like this video and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button and like